<sighs> Hello, and welcome to my latest Zoom call. And the light is green, so now we can talk. And today, we're talking about <sighs> when you're actually coin and banknote collecting. So, basically, we're talking about how you get experience in coin collecting. And the only way you can actually get experience is through time and actually researching the topic. You know, I know people like to say, do your own research. Well, that's applicable to a point. You want to read scientific articles about coins? I know, about chemotherapy. Maybe, oh, how do blood clots? I don't know, maybe how car engines work. You can actually do it. And if you read like, half an hour to an hour a day, you're going to become an expert in no time. So Jordan Frank said that, but not only him, quite a few other people who, you know, recommend that you, if you want to become knowledgeable, you need to actually extensively research a topic. You're not going to become an expert overnight. So that's the first thing you need to do research. So when you get it, like, Okay, I was going to do a video. Filipino banknotes. Let me put this microphone on me. So basically, if you want to avoid being ripped off, because on eBay, not only that on websites, there's a lot of people who, even on YouTube, there's a lot of channels who give out lots of false information. Like there was one saying that there was a, 1976 50 cent coins worth 14,000 pounds and I'm going what what no it's worth like 50 cents so basically if you want to become an expert in banknotes so these are Filipino banknotes pretty much I they, there's websites that have catalogs of these banknotes so I know that um this one was issued in 1949 because they run out of coinage. It's five cents. And this one, uh, Series 66, issued 1944, Victory, after the Americans come back. And this one's a, probably issued in the 1960s and they're pretty much uncirculated. And then we have, no, they're just the national banknotes. And then we have a whole bunch of banknotes issued during the second world war and these ones are all provincial issues so these are emergency banknotes and it says that oh on this one it says on it emergency circulating banknotes and these are probably 1941 42 but to actually know these banknotes you need a catalog so you need to get information on these banknotes and the first thing so the this is a regional one, so this is Australia, but you can get them for a lot of countries, Germany, United States, New Zealand has their own. I'm not too sure about the smaller countries, especially the African ones. But there might be a specialised banknote for African. But in general, people, when they start out with banknotes, they start out even with the regional catalogue, but if they want to get experience in international banknotes, then you get these books. So these are pretty much standard catalog of world banknotes. And you can also get them for coins as well. And look how thick they are. So if I, I put a, uh, where's my, oh, fuck it, one penny coin on it. You can see how thick these are. So this one is, what's that, 1,000. They're 1,250 pages. And we open up the Guatemala, so we've got the banknotes. And this is uh, extensive from 1368 to 1960, and they're frozen. So I think this is a 2010. Initial price was 100, 120 bucks, but I purchased this for 40. So you can get them cheaper. Um, the, the, Catalog is uh, in black and white, but you can also use 
you know, other catalogs like Numista, but there is a difference in it. These ones have a frozen price in it. And so this is probably a price collected from different coin shops, coin companies, about how much they sell these banknotes for. Uh, and that's how with uh, the with uh, other catalogs. So with this one, that's also how they get the pricing. So you got, yeah. Now you got a lot of coins. Uh, let me show. God, too much advertising. That's so they make the money. So you got a lot of coins, and they put the prices in there and the information. So that's how those work. But because there's just so many banknotes, so this one only as it only goes to nine eight sixty. So there's another banknote folder. It's pretty much as thick, and it has nine eight sixty one plus, which I need to get because I really do need. And they have prices. So you know, you've got the earlier banknotes. Generally, if they don't have a price, it means that they're pretty rare or scarce, and they very rarely come in the market. Now, some other times, like these uh, Nicaraguan, have prices 550 US dollars. So some of them do get quite expensive. So initially, when you're collecting uh, banknotes and coins, it's a good thing to start with your own country where you are at the time because that's where you can get the most resources from. So I'm in Australia, so I'd start with Australian coins and then I'd get one of these because it is very valuable in actually your coin collecting. Uh, the prices in here do vary, so you do still need to do research. That's what eBay sold items are the best. I'll take a grain of salt because sometimes people they put an item on for a high price then they sell it themselves they buy it themselves and then they resell it and say oh look at this this coin went for a high price but it's only really worth uh crap and that's where you get for a lot of old coins uh, online sales, you need to go, eBay is probably not a good place for medieval coins, so we've got a lot of medieval coins. Uh, you're probably better off going to V Coins or MA Shops. That's where they sell a lot of, uh, they have a good reputation, but they also sell a lot of um, medieval and ancient coins. So you've got the catalogue like this as well. As you can see, a lot of the coins are missing. So... A lot of them are very high value, so they know the price it was last sold, and a lot of them are actually missing values. So, sold prices, not nah, means it's probably very scarce, or well, might have been mentioned in the past as being minted, but it's either been, they're all being remelted or they're in private collections and they can't actually get to the images. Uh, but sometimes, you know, they have uh, images of all the actual or a lot of the issues and they try to make the the actual uh, size of the coin in the book uh, the size that the coin actually is in real life um, but a lot of the times they don't give information about the metal content uh, the diameter and the weight it actually should be so these are taller coins so they should be about 50 cent actually in a, like a and color coins, they should be about as big as that. Probably a bit bigger than that. And yeah, a lot of them are over a thousand dollars in value. And a lot of them, uh, if you want to get Tala of 60 Kreutzer, and no, they don't actually have their value. So, this is how you insure yourself against against being defrauded. You need to know, oh, that's right, still there. You need to know basically what you're buying. And you need to know uh, the values that they would sell for. So $20 banknote, what would you pay for this? It's an old issue, 2008, circulated. You should research this. This is only worth 20 bucks. There's too many folds in it. It's not worth any more than that. I just put these on eBay just to, you know, give me exposure. And that's where 
these come in. You need to know uh, the actual value of each of these individual pieces because you know, I've pretty much purchased these for like two dollars each. Some of these would be probably two dollars. Some of them are probably going to be worth a lot more. Um, see, I don't know. I don't know these banknotes. That's why I wouldn't have paid twenty dollars for each of these banknotes because I don't know if they're actually worth that much. But I recommend that you, if you're going to buy anything, anything, you're going to buy a house, you're going to buy a new water heater, you're going to buy a piano. You research it first and you find if it is a good product. And if the price that you're paying is what the actual market value of that product is at the time you're buying it. Because over time as well, these products will vary in price. The more of them come on the market, the cheaper they get. The more they disappear, the more expensive they're going to get as well. Anyway. Supply and demand, beautiful. Love the free market, love it. Makes me wealthy, makes the environment a lot poorer. Anyway, thank you very much. I hope this helps you with your banknote collecting and have an awesome coin and banknote collecting time. Peru buddies.